Hey guys, Janae Hollow Point Harding from Finally here. Professional MMA fighter fighting for Bellator MMA promotion. Just here to have a chat with Maori TV if you want to come check it out. I've been to America, obviously. I've been to Las Vegas and I've trained at Syndicate before and then and the UFC PI. Um, I've been to San Jose, Fort in San Jose, I've been to Connecticut, New York, uh, Boston, Rhode Island. I mean, you've been all over the place. Yeah, and I haven't been back to New Zealand for a while, so I was like, all right, I really need to make it back. There's a lot of places I still have left on my list to do, even this year especially. There's so many aspects that are attractive about MMA. I mean, um, it's so rapidly growing in such a short time and it's so young for, for in the way of combat sports and all that sort of stuff and passing things like boxing, which have been around forever. I'm a very strong striker. All my wins are professional wins are from knockouts and TKOs. So I love to get the finish. I love to be aggressive. But um, I've also been in absolute wars and back and forth and taking damage and giving damage. So um, I think sometimes like that kind of thing is relatable when, when the spectator gets to view someone really putting their heart on the line. I've come back at, I feel like, the right time in my life um, to come back really get involved in my family, my heritage and my culture and stuff like that. And then having this gym here as well that's amazing and renowned like internationally, it's just like an added bonus. So yeah, it's exciting. It's like almost a little bit nerve wracking because you're kind of like, I mean, there's this the family is family for sure, but they, I don't know them too well because I've just been away for so long. So it's kind of like, um, I think a lot of things are always such a, like a cultural kind of spiritual experience when you come back to family, you come develop these um, like bloodlines and, and stuff like that and learn always whenever I come back, I learn a lot more about myself. Well, I know she's in, you know, in search of her heritage, um, but for me, you know, as, as a Māori woman, just to really nurture her, that side of her, and you know, um, give her what we were given from from our parents, but you know, first and foremost, we've got to pay respect to her mum, who single-handedly raised her to to become the woman that she is today. Yeah, and very blessed to be able to be a part of her life now. This dinner, this dinner has been really cool just to see everyone come together and um, cook up a massive guy. It's just like something that I've always kind of loved um, about bringing people together and, and seeing it, but knowing that they're specifically here for me is even better. It's really cool. Um, and I appreciate like everyone taking time out of their lives because obviously I just came on a last minute kind of trip and was just like, oh guys, I would like to visit. And they've just come up with this massive gathering and I'm so appreciative of it. She's very much like her mum, you know, her mum's got a beautiful weight of her and it shows on her. Regardless of the fact that she looks so much like our side of the farm, eh? you know, it's the beauty that's in within her that time is definitely from her mum. There was a lot of time I had, not shame, but just like this idea that since I don't strongly know te reo and I don't strongly know the culture, then I can't necessarily say that I'm Māori, like I can't necessarily identify with it if I don't know it enough. But I mean, recently, and obviously with maturity, I have this understanding that it doesn't matter, like it doesn't matter if you only know like a few te reo words, or it doesn't matter if you only know that um, a couple of songs that come on or a couple of colours, like honestly, it, it doesn't matter your Māori, whether you like it or not as well. And and to to have that intention that you want to know it and that you want to be a part of it is enough. It's like, it's just really cool to see like the um, Waikato River and stuff like that. It's like very interesting to see how, much, how strong and prominent like the culture is in such a small place. Um, such kind of like unexpected place as well, I guess. But um, hearing more about um, the like royal lines and, and what's going on uh, during the time here has been really interesting and learning a little bit more about like the family and all that sort of stuff. It's really cool to know that um, on my grandfather's side that there is a strong bloodline connection to the royal family and that I've had that kind of all along and not really known much about it. Beautiful, eh? 
Yeah. Knew so much about her from her father before he died. And just listening to the way he spoke about her, we knew how precious she was to him. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, we weren't able to find her when he passed. So it made it all that much more precious to know that we finally got to meet her. As much as this part of, is such a big part of my life and has created the person that I am today, losing a parent and not having him around, I, wouldn't, I don't think I would be exactly who I am. Um, but at the same time, it's always one of those things where you just want to recognise that it's upsetting that you missed all the stuff that I've achieved and especially what I'm about to achieve. Whatever I've done in my life, um, and I feel like I've done quite a lot, it's upsetting to know that he's missed that and um, through now having missed out on a lot, I just feel like we obviously would, I, I just said to him then, I was like, I think we could have been good mates and it's just upsetting, but it's not something I want to waste energy on in a way, I just want to like have it out in the open and just know that, that that's how I feel. I was kind of always putting this brave face like, oh, it's not a big deal, it's just part of my life. I, I've never had a dad, it's all good, like, no problems. But it is like, now at the age that I'm at, I feel like it's definitely something that I needed to come to and need to accept in just, some, um, just a more like conscious way and, and just be present when I'm here and actually take it all in and then, yeah, continue on. I have another three fights left on this contract. It was five fights within the 22 month period. So um, we're looking at three fights this year that will end out this contract. Um, of course, anything could happen in the year. You never know kind of um, if I win those three fights, lose those three fights, what's gonna happen and what position that puts me in. But after the three fights, I'll definitely consider re-signing with Bellator, of course, if that's what they offer as well. Um, but at the same time, there might be the possibility of UFC offering something similar. Yeah, she's shown us a, another side of that type of sport that doesn't necessarily have to be violent, you know. Um, yeah, she carries that really well. But still, still get, you know, worried, scared for her. Like, I like the role of being, and I try to use my platform as positively as I can and try to influence um, young females in all kinds of martial arts as, as well as I can. Um, yeah, that's kind of like what is like the responsibility I now have. And, and I think for other female fighters as well, they have that too. So it's just always good to be conscious about what you're doing and how you're holding yourself and what you're representing in a way of combat sports and how you're helping kind of this, um, this idea of gender stereotypes.